Hello and welcome to the session on modeling of loading and supports in 3D in the Plaxis LE software. My name is Murray Fredland and I will be walking you through the methodology today. This current talk will give some introduction to the background of modeling anchors in three dimensions and go through a few examples related to extending the concepts of anchor analysis from 2D to 3D. A particular focus will be the method of analysis and looking at differences between 2D and 3D analysis. It should firstly be noted that slopes can be stabilized using a variety of conditions. The majority of loading conditions produce 3D modeling scenarios given that anchors ultimately reduce to stresses applied to a line in 3D space. So traditionally a 2D limit equilibrium analysis is done to analyze the slope. However, it is difficult to account for such things as differing spacing or varying installation geometry in the third dimension with a 2D model. So it's important to understand the consequences and limitations of this 2D method of analysis. There are numerous studies on anchors that show the importance of considering actual three-dimensional conditions. Desai in 1986 proposed a three-dimensional procedure based on the finite element method and considering elastoplastic behavior, as well as interface elements to account for stress and displacement distributions and the relative motion between anchors and the soil mass. Mikulowski in 1989 applied an upper bound limit analysis to 3D slope stability which illustrated the manner in which the slide mechanism becomes three-dimensional as the slope is locally loaded. This analysis emphasizes the fact that anchors should produce field conditions that require 3D analysis approaches. This is a brief background overview but it should be noted that there is evidence in the literature showing that three-dimensional analysis approaches should be pursued when analyzing anchors. So this approach is also true when analyzing loading conditions. The evidence shows that limit equilibrium remains relevant as it produces reasonably accurate evaluations using relatively simple computations. There is, however, a lack of research showing the specific differences between applying LEM in 2D and 3D. We will therefore explore some of the general concepts in this video. The purpose of this presentation is to demonstrate the analysis of slope scenarios that illustrate the differences between analyzing anchors in 2D versus 3D. So 2D versus 3D loading conditions are also evaluated. We will be looking at a variety of simple and complex geometry conditions along with various anchor placement scenarios. So it's worth also noting that the 3D factor safety is typically higher than a two-dimensional factor of safety. Therefore, the practical benefit of a 3D analysis is that fewer anchors may be required to stabilize a slope. There are three primary methods of analyzing slope stability. Firstly is the limit equilibrium method, and there is also the shear strength reduction finite element method. And in between these two is the enhanced limit equilibrium, where we use stresses from a finite element method as the basis for performing a limit equilibrium analysis. So we will be focusing on the limit equilibrium method slope stability analysis in this video. So there are obvious geometry differences between 2D versus three-dimensional three configurations. So this behavior was demonstrated previously by research performed by Professor Jitarana from the University of Guyana in Brazil. In this slide, we note differences between 2D and 3D analysis for vertical cuts with convex and concave configurations. So it can be seen that 3D analysis is producing factors of safety of 36% to 72% higher than 2D analysis for these geometry scenarios. It's also worth noting that it is possible to set up a three-dimensional model which exactly repli replicates the behavior of a two-dimensional model. This is done in the figures in this slide. The left-hand model shows the two-dimensional model set up and the equivalent three-dimensional model is shown in the figure to the right. On the figure on the right, there is no shear resistance applied to the end faces of the sliding mass, and therefore the factor of safety should be the same as the 2D configuration, which it is. It should be noted that the slip shape is not well aligned with reality for most slope failures, and the fact that the shear resistance is not applied to the vertical faces at each end of the slide is a reason that the 2D factor of safety is typically lower than the 3D factor of safety. So it's helpful to go over the differences between a 2D and a 3D analysis. The differences may be caused by a number of different factors, which include the slip surface shape, its spatial location, 
topography, the layering of geostrata layers, the water table, the application of distributed or point loads, and the placement of anchors, micropiles, or geomembranes in the slope. So in this video, we will focus on the differences caused by distributed or point loads and the effect of anchors and geomembranes, as well as micropiles on the solution. So a factor to think about with 2D analysis is related to the addition of supports and the subsequent assessment of the factor safety for a 2D project. The 2D analysis really doesn't relate to the 3D analysis well as it effectively treats the anchors within the 2D analysis as long thin plates. In reality, these anchors are line loads in 3D space. So in a 3D analysis, each anchor is treated as truly a line load and the spacing between the anchors is considered in the location of the critical slip surface. This example is a homogeneous slope of 5 meters high, which can be analyzed in 2D and 3D. The slope consists of an 89 degree slope, and the resulting factor of safety calculated is 1.3. The shear strength of the material utilized in this example is a cohesion of 15 kPa and a friction angle of 35 degrees. If we extend the 89 degree slope out into 3D, we notice that the factor of safety raises to 1.6 which is a 21% increase over the two-dimensional factor of safety. In the 3D analysis, the true shear strength representation is denoted in the wings of the ellipsoid, and the true interaction with each 3D anchor is considered in the analysis. Therefore, the 3D can be considered a more rigorous analysis. If we extend this analysis to a number of conditions with various anchor configurations, we can see that there is a general increase in the factor of safety from the 2D analysis to the 3D analysis and the increase ranges between approximately 8% at the low end and 21% at the high end. These numbers cannot be considered general, and the user is encouraged to analyze the specifics of each particular site. So we have previously looked at, fairly, at a fairly simple case, but what if this is extended to a scenario with more complex geometry? So in this scenario, we have a roadway built with fill and placed on a slope. We are looking at increasing the factor of safety through the use of reinforcements as the original factor of safety is quite low, i.e. it's close to failure conditions. In these figures, the factors of safety are calculated with both circular and non-circular slip surfaces and are displayed on the figure. In this light, we present a number of different variations in the roadway with differing anchor implementations to raise the factor of safety higher. It can be seen that there is approximately an 18% or greater difference in the factor of safety between 2D and 3D. We are also able to adjust the anchor spacing in the third dimension in 3D. Micropiles are also used in some of the scenarios to strengthen the slope. And so it should be also noted that the 3D model was created by simply taking the two-dimensional models and, ex and extruding them in the third dimension. The software will recognize any anchors placed in a 2D model and honor the same anchor spacing in the 3D model that is subsequently generated. This greatly simplifies the transition from 2D to 3D analysis. This is an interesting model as it is simple and perhaps representative of a real world scenario. However, the location of the critical slip surface is unknown to the untrained eye. So it is most proper that the location of the critical slip surface can be determined through a spatial stability analysis which can be done by sweeping a multiplane analysis around the slope in 3D. Therefore, the user can set up multiple cross sections which can be analyzed along with many trial slip surfaces to be analyzed at each location. If we analyze this model with no anchors, we can see that slip location is slightly offset from the toe of the jut out point. Most engineers would intuitively feel that the most critical location is right at the nose of the 3D structure. It's slightly offset in this case because the left hand slope is slightly steeper than the, the rest of the slope. Therefore, we can see the location of the critical slip surface, and now we may want to increase the stability of this particular slope through the use of anchors. If we position anchors in a pattern around the existing slip surface, we can see that the factor of safety raises up to about 1.5. Therefore, the pattern has been useful, but we may want to add further anchors to raise the factor of safety even higher. We now add additional anchors in the same location with increased density. These additional anchors cause the location of the most critical slip surface to shift around to the opposite side of the hill. 
Therefore, we note the influence of the anchors in stabilizing a certain portion of the hill. The final calculated factor of safety here is 1.5. In this scenario, we now add a distributed load to the top of the slope as shown by the yellow arrow. This additional load is then considered by the multiplane analysis and causes, firstly, the location of the critical slip surface to shift to the left and the factor of safety to decrease to 1.413. Therefore, this example indicates how a spatially finite distributed load in 3D can affect the location of the spatial critical slip surface. In summary, it was demonstrated that there are increases to the critical factor of safety when moving from a 2D to a 3D solution, regardless of the stratigraphy and support type. The critical 3D factor of safety increases over the 2D factor of safety between 8% to 21%. This implies an economic savings in slopes that can be realized from a lower anchor requirement when the problem is analyzed in 3D. So it's possible that even higher 2D versus 3D differences may be noted in the anchor pattern if it is irregular in the third dimension. In this set of models, we demonstrate the ability to improve stability calculations when considering topography effects, anchors, and distributed loads in a full 3D model. Thank you for your time and your attention today. This concludes the video on anchors and loading conditions in 3D.